We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. In today's episode, what I want to uh, bring to your attention is, like, once again, we're going to dive into the difference between objective and subjective and the ramifications of those with regards to this article that I'm about to show you right now. So I want to be clear. I am a murder abolitionist. I would hope that you are too. That means no murder at all under any circumstances, period. I'm a murder abolitionist. I'm also a rape abolitionist. And I'm also a theft abolitionist. That means that objectively speaking, I'm not for any of those three things under any circumstances. But in the subjective world, the argument is that it's okay under certain circumstances. It is subjective. It depends on the situation. But if that's the case, if you are for murder under certain circumstances, then you're for murder, period. You're for murder. You can't go, yes, I'm for murder, but only, but only. No, you're for murder. Does that mean that you're also for rape under certain circumstances? How about theft? In America, our progressive tax, tax structure is theft. It isn't fair. Progressive tax structure is not fair by its definition. Some pay nothing, some pay more. How is that equal? Where's the equity in that? Do you see? The subjective world is the playground of demons. It's the playground of evil. Nobody who really cares about truth and justice and life would ever live or live in the subjective world or pull the arguments against murder and rape and theft and, and evil into a subjective world unless they're for evil. Anyway, so let's go ahead and dive in. So this right here uh, is an article just came out uh, yesterday, and I thought it was uh, significant enough to, to speak on it. This is coming from the Daily Mail. Texas Supreme Court temporarily blocks pregnant mother, 31, from emergency abortion at 20 weeks after state AG threatened to charge doctor if procedure was carried out despite fetus having no chance of survival. Now, I want you to understand that this whole title right there that's all propaganda. It's all designed to get you to have an emotional response that they can then tie back to their whole agenda of baby murder because they're a death cult. They want to tie this back to Roe v. Wade. They want to tie this back to, see, we told you these, these laws and, and being against abortion, which is murder. Being a, being a murder abolitionist is actually going to put mothers in danger. If you really cared about the mothers, you would allow them to kill their own children. <laughs> Carte blanche. You would allow them to kill their own children. There's so much wrong with this, with this title that it's, it's disgusting, actually. And then when you dive into the article, they're very... Until you get down to the bottom, they don't even tell you what, what's wrong. They make it seem like... Because this is at 20 weeks. You realize how many... Like, they can save the mother and the baby at 20 weeks. So... Right off the face, I knew, like, that doesn't make sense. The doctors would do, they would induce labor, and they would, they would save them both. So then you start to read, you start to move down this article, and you start to find out, and I'm going to include the link so you can check this out, and you start to find out that the baby was diagnosed with a condition that could possibly, that could possibly cause it to lose its life early after it's been born. Could. Could. So they're saying that, well, you know, it could, be, it could be stillborn. Well, if it's stillborn, that's a miscarry, not an abortion. But then they, they, they try to address that by saying, yes, but if it's stillborn and they try to induce labor, it could possibly, you know, rupture her uterus and impede her ability to have children. They're, they're jumping to all of the extremes as if there is certainty. 
because what they really want to do is use this whole case to put forth their agenda, to push their agenda, to be able to kill more children. They're taking this outlier case and they're trying to shape, uh, reshape it and reframe it to make it seem like under certain circumstances, subjectivity, abortions are necessary in order to save the mother. This has always been their assertion. And so, so they have to cherry pick. They have to wait for these cases to happen. That's why they do this big article on it. They don't do articles on, on when the babies are saved and the mothers are saved when something happens in, 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 later, in later term. They don't show you that. They don't show you how many babies are saved by the expertise and the experience and the ingenuity of our physicians and our medical staff. No, they're going to cherry pick this one case and then make it seem through language that there's no other recourse. So let me read a little bit. Mother of two, last name Cox, was granted permission to have an abortion after discovering her 20-week fetus was fatally impaired and could jeopardize her chances of having another child. Do you see how that's worded? She finds out her 20 week, I believe she found out at 18 weeks, but she finds, she discovers that at 20 weeks, her fetus, not her baby, do you see the wording? Was fatally impaired. Fatally impaired? Fatally impaired. That means that the impairment is fatal. So the baby is going to die and could jeopardize her chances of having another child. Do you see the wording? They, 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 they throw in, we don't even know if this woman plans to have another child. Right, that's never even put clear in this article where they're saying that they want to have other children, at least in this article. I don't know if there's other articles or other videos, but I want you to see the wording because it's all propaganda. They're making it seem like this baby, this miracle, is, is, is worthy of murder because it's going to save not only the mother, but also her ability to further have children. Understand, these people are for baby murder. It's antithetical to believe that they're also for her having more children. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you see how, how that contradicts? But look at the word. They use fetus. They use the word fetus. They actually use the word fetus. If she carried this child to, to 20 weeks, she doesn't look at it as a fetus. She has two other children. I guarantee you that she's not calling this a fetus when she talks to her mom about her pregnancy, and when she talks to her husband. They're not saying, hey, well, can't, we can't wait till, until this fetus is born. I guarantee they're not using that, that language. The 31-year-old told the state court in Texas earlier this month that she had received emergency medical treatment four times since becoming pregnant and pregnant with a baby that doctors expect to be stillborn. Now we're using the word baby. And if they expect it to be stillborn, well, they could be wrong. That's just an expectation. That's not a certainty. And that's, and that's the whole, that's the underlying thing behind all of this. What it comes down to is that the baby was diagnosed, and I'll show you what it is. The baby was diagnosed with a, with a particular condition. It's a, it's a genetic one. It's a chromosomal one. And this woman doesn't want to have a baby that, that could have a handicap. That's what it comes down to. I don't know if she's being advised to this or what, but this family does not want to have a baby. Because I guarantee when she got pregnant, she wanted this baby. I guarantee they celebrated it. And, and all that. Then they find out 18 weeks in that the baby could have a, a, a chromosomal defect, a birth defect, and now they want to shake the edge of sketch and erase this child, erase their own flesh and blood. That's what this comes down to. So make no mistake, this is what you get in the subjective world. Wait, you know what? We don't want this one. It's going to come out with a defect. And they're going to use all of these potential things that can happen, they're going to highlight those. Oh, it could potentially rupture your uterus. Oh, it could do this. It could. Or you could carry the baby to term, have no problems whatsoever with the pregnancy. The baby can be born. And yes, depending on the condition, and I'll show you later on, depending on the condition, yes, it is possible that the baby does not make it to see even one year old. But the baby could. The baby could live a long time. They don't even love their own flesh and blood enough to give that baby that chance. And that's why these cases need to be looked at as what they are, murder. And if they, if they murder this baby, they need to all be held accountable. 
The family needs to be held accountable, but the mother, both the mother and the father, the physician who performs it needs to be held accountable because it is murder. And no amount of propaganda and, and insinuation and anecdotal stories are going to obfuscate the, the truth that abortion is murder. And instead of giving this baby a chance, which it most certainly has when you when you when you dive into what the what the actual condition is, the baby does have a chance. You want to kill it. You want to, excuse me. You want to murder it because killing and murdering are, are two different things. A judge granted her temporary order citing the threat to her fertility. See how they use the oh, it's a threat to her fertility. That once again, does she even want to have more children? This is her third. And if the baby is stillborn, they say that it could rupture her uterus. Is, isn't that the case with all stillborn births at this late stage? And yet they happen anyway. And how many of those women are rendered, are rendered, are rendered infertile after, others, after that? See, they don't give you any of those numbers. Because I'm sure that it could happen, but they don't tell you what the probability is. Do you see what I'm saying? Because they don't actually want to save children. They don't actually care about, see, this would actually be reproductive rights right here. They don't care about reproductive rights. They care about ending reproduction, which is why they want to use this as a flagship. They want to use it as a flagship to ram home their murder agenda. See, we told you. Look at, look at how it put her in jeopardy. See, see, how, see how the law is, is, is going to prosecute and do this and do this, and they're the victims, they're the victims. No. The baby is the victim. The law is there to protect the baby because the parents obviously don't want to. And that's what we do. We protect children. Even if the parents don't protect them, we recognize that the children still need to be protected because they can't protect themselves. <laughs> and that's the truth. And so no matter of propaganda, no, no amount of, of fancy words or, or catchphrases or, or any of those things, all those, little, all those buzzwords is going to, is going to erase the fact that what you want to do is murder the most innocent, the most defenseless of our entire species. And then you want to point the finger at me because I want to protect them. Yet if you were in distress, you wouldn't want me just to walk by, you'd want me to protect you, right? But not in this case, because you want to murder your, your baby because it, you feel it's in your best interest. You want to sacrifice that baby on the altar of, of a pagan god so that you can feel better about your life and not have it burdened by a, a baby that has a potential birth defect. And that's what it comes down to. You look at life as a burden when it doesn't come wrapped up in the package that you want it to be wrapped up in. So I'm going to read this again. A judge granted her a temporary order citing the threat to her fertility in the first case of its kind since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year. See, first case of its kind. They're, gonna, they're going to harp on this. You're going to see this keep coming back. Just so you know. Because they're exposing themselves. They always do. The truth always comes out what their, really, what their real priority is. Nobody's, nobody's trying to save this baby. Nobody's trying to give this baby a chance for life. Nobody has hope that this baby is, is, going, to, is going to essentially essentially defy the odds and survive. They don't know for sure. They don't even want to give it a shot. Do you see what I'm saying? Because life doesn't mean that much to them. Because if it did, it wouldn't be circumstantial. This is circumstantial. Right? This is subjective. Oh, yeah, life is, life is unless. No. Life either has a high value. Human beings either have a high value, objectively speaking, or they do not. Oh, wait. The baby's going to have a birth defect or have a handicap? They start thinking about, oh man, the financial burden and the, the, the. <laughs> and then what's their decision? Oh yeah, no, let's kill it. Let's murder it, excuse me. Let's murder it. Not, you know what, let's get a second opinion. You know what, I know that's a diagnosis, but we can defy the odds. Or maybe you have the baby and the baby does die early. Maybe you... Maybe the baby is stillborn, which would be a miscarriage, and you do induce labor, and maybe it does, maybe it does rupture your uterus and you're not able to have more children. But wouldn't you sacrifice all that for your own flesh and blood? 
when you set me when you make that sacrifice to give them a chance at life that's that's what mothers and fathers do they sacrifice themselves for their children like, oh no 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 i we don't want to sacrifice our lives for for this child because this child is a defect oh okay so the value of life is dependent upon the worth you place on them got it not the worth that's placed on them by their own creator by god no okay i got it that's what always happens in the subjective world atrocities and evil can happen in the subjective world they can't happen in the objective world because when something is objectively true that undergirds morality and we have an objective moral standard with which to go from and we and we we consult it hey is murder right no what about these circumstances no and then the way is clear we do whatever we can to preserve this life to give it a chance to give this baby a chance i'm going to read further this law might actually cause her to lose that ability is shocking and would be genuine miscarriage of justice and state district judge maya guerrera gamble an elected democrat said said state district judge that's that's because she's she's a, a, a worshiper of death because look at how they're talking the law might actually cause this is all this is all speculation but they want to they want to use this speculation to put forth what their priority is and that's what i'm saying you can see what their priority is because within this speculation if you prioritize life you would go okay we know that's a possibility but we want to do everything we possibly can to save your baby and give it a chance at, at a happy life they're like oh nope let's go ahead and flush that toilet <laughs> let's flush it quick there's a possibility oh yeah let's, let's kill it there's a possibility that that you could be infertile oh yeah no it's a great that's that's they that's a great reason we can we can sell that reason we can sell that reason we can we can garner sympathy from other women oh she could lose her ability to have children and then then you find out you fast forward two years the baby let's say the baby's stillborn and and they induce labor which would be a miscarriage and and all prayers would go out but obviously they don't want the baby anyway so i don't know what are they going to celebrate and and then you know it it doesn't rupture her uterus she's able to have more children but then they decide not to <laughs> so then they actually don't have any more children so that whole fertility thing will be exposed for what it is it's just a pull on the heartstrings to manipulate people emotionally into backing murder subjectively speaking so here's here's where they start to point the finger and start to blame republican republican and see republican Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson on Thursday threatened to prosecute any doctors involved in providing an emergency abortion to a woman, objecting to a woman. That's weird. That's weird wording. I thought we were talking about this specific case. Why you're saying to a woman, making it seem like it can be any woman. Man, talk about trying to strike fear, right? Why wouldn't it be threatened to prosecute any doctors involved in providing an emergency abortion to Mrs. Cox? Isn't that what we're talking about? The 31 year old isn't that who we're talking about and her baby so why would you say an emergency abortion to a woman objecting to the finding and said the activist the activist judge's order because she's obviously an activist she shouldn't even be sitting where she's sitting this judge is not she's obviously biased right and she's and she's a willing disciple of this death cult said the activist judge's order does not insulate hospitals doctors or anyone else from civil and criminal liability for violating texas abortion laws great bravo yes those laws are there to protect babies from being murdered so they're murderers if you let them go through with this they should be trying to save both the mother if they really do no harm and cared for life they would be pulling out all stops to save them both that's her reproductive right is to save what when she's reproducing to save what she reproduces and her so he's actually following reproductive health care this is actually reproductive health care abortion laws that are against abortion are actually reproductive health care i want you to understand what they say is the opposite because they're evil the letter was sent to three hospitals where domla carson the doctor who said she would provide the abortion to cox has admitting privileges Texas became one of 12 states to outlaw nearly all abortions within hours of Roe v. Wade decision in June 20, 2022. It needs to be all of them. It says nearly all. They didn't go far enough, but that's bravo. That's good for them. Those 12 states, awesome. Because I want you to understand, what they're choosing is to combat murder. And this is the judge here. So this is, this is the husband and wife here. 
This is the judge here. And then they put this picture, keep abortion legal. Keep murder legal. Do you see what I'm saying? You're either for murder or you're not, and these people are for murder. And so they're going to try and make this an abortion right issue. That's why you're going to keep seeing that you're going to see this pop up again. And then if, if, if she does end up having her, her uterus ruptured because the baby is stillborn, they're going to just drive this home. They'll probably even try to sue and all this kind of stuff because you know what? They don't really care about that life. They're not even trying to save their own flesh and blood. That tells me everything I need to know about these people. And then check this out. Look at these numbers. Fewer than, and now, now Daily Mail is putting this down to make it seem like it's a bad thing. But I want you to check this number out. Fewer than 50 abortions have been performed in the state since compared to more than 16,000 in the five months before the ban. Do you know what this means? This means that since, since Texas has, has stepped up their game against abortion, not far enough, but they've stepped it up enough to where since then they have saved, <laughs> they have saved over 15,000 lives. Over 15,000 lives have been saved since this. That, they should get a standing ovation. Now, once again, 50 were still murdered. But think about all of those lives. All of those lives that can now contribute to our society. They can become doctors, lawyers, plumbers, electricians. They can become teachers. They can potentially become president. All of those, all that hope. Over 15,000 lives. <laughs> that, that's a great start. Right? We still lost 50. But we would have lost 16,000. And these people are, are putting this in this article like that's a bad thing. Like they're for life. They're not for life. They wanted that 50, that the 50 murders that happened weren't enough. It needed to be 16,000. They are mass murderers. That's what I want you guys to understand because they look at murder as subjective. Let me go on further. Check this out. Cox delivered her two previous children by cesarean and said doctors had warned that another C-section at full term would threaten her ability to carry another child. Hold on. So, is it the cesarean that could threaten her ability? Or is it the condition that her baby was diagnosed with? What are they talking about now? Do you, do you, do you see how they make something seem one way and then when you get further down the article... The truth starts to kind of come out. So is it the C-section? So even if the baby didn't have didn't have this this diagnosed defect, if she had gone full term with another C-section, it would have threatened her ability to carry another child. So I wonder if the if she if the baby wasn't diagnosed and it was going to be just as 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 healthy as her previous two children if she still would have decided to do this because they got pregnant again they would have told her after the second pregnancy that hey if you get pregnancy again we have to do another c-section and you go full term it could threaten your ability to carry another child they still got pregnant again so does that mean that she was already gambling her her fertile her her future fertility on on having this child so then why why the reversal? Once again, this leads me to believe it's because the child is going to have a birth defect. And now they're, now they're trying to, to, cha to change up the language and be like, well, you know, we just want to do this because it, it can make me infertile. But according to this right here, the doctors had already told you. Doctors had warned that another C-section at full term would, would threaten, would threaten her ability. Not could, would threaten her ability. And yet they still decided to have another child. That's interesting, right? They also told her. They also told her the fetus had a diagnosis of, trisom of, of trisomy and could not survive more than a week if carried to full term. Could not survive more than a week if carried to full term, warning her that an induced labor could rupture her uterus if it died in the womb. So now I'm confused. So is it the C-section or is it is it the Trisomy. It's actually pronounced trisomy. I'm sorry. Which is it? Because to me, what it seems like is they still wanted to have another child, even if it could potentially 
stop her, her fertility past that point. They still want to have another child. She was, going, she was going to gamble and potentially give up her ability to have more children to have this one. That's how much they wanted it. And then after it got diagnosed with trisomy, now they're rolling, now they're stepping back and rolling that back. Uh, no, no, this isn't going to be fair. I, I should, I, I could, I could potentially have, have my womb, you know, ruptured and, 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 and I can, and, and so I don't want to lose my fertility. Okay, but you were going to gamble your fertility before you knew that the baby had trisomy. Huh, that's interesting. She went to court after learning of her fetuses, once again, fetus, learning of her fetuses diagnosis at 18 weeks. So she went to court. Do you, do you see do you, do you see what's happening here? Do you see what's happening? She was already going to gamble further further fertility to have one more child. It was only when that child was diagnosed with trisomy that then she wanted to get rid of it. And now they're trying to use her potentially losing her fertility as a reason why she should get you know to, to garner sympathy when she was already gambling that to begin with. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm done reading this. I, I'm gonna go ahead and include this. In, uh, you know, so you can read through this further. I've read. I've read. I've read the whole thing already. Um, but I. I wanted you guys to see. The difference between subjective and objective, because in the subjective world, this right here, they can make seem like it's. It's a righteous thing to do, when clearly, even in their own article, they can't hide that it's not. They're just hoping that when you read that big old title, that it already has emotion swell up in you. And then you read the rest of the article through that emotionally charged lens and not using your prefrontal cortex to critically think and actually read through the article, looking at where they put every comma, looking at the verbiage that they use, how they use it, why they use it, looking at whatever facts they give you, and then going in and researching that because... When I saw trisomy, I was like, oh, okay, well, I can just go look up trisomy and see what it is. And when you go to look up trisomy, what you find out here, this is coming from the Better Health channel, what you find out is that a chromosome condition is caused by an alteration in the number or genetic structure of chromosomes. Trisomy, meaning three bodies, means the affected person has three copies of one of the chromosomes instead of two. This means they have 47 chromosomes instead of 46. Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and Patel syndrome are the most common forms of trisomy. Children affected by trisomy usually have a range of birth anomalies, including delayed development and intellectual disabilities. And then it goes through risk factors. But did you know that there's different, different types of trisomy? There's trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. There's trisomy 18, which is Edwards syndrome. And then there's trisomy 13, which is Patel syndrome. Now, with trisomy 18 and trisomy 13, if you look down here at the bottom, it says survival beyond the neonatal period is uncommon for babies with Patel syndrome. Uncommon. Not completely unheard of, but uncommon. It's not a common occurrence, but it, but it can happen. And then same thing here, if you look at the bottom of Edwards syndrome, survival beyond the neonatal period is uncommon for babies with Edwards syndrome. Just uncommon. Notice how in the article, they don't make a distinction between 13, 18, and 21. Because 21 is Down syndrome, and we know that a baby with Down syndrome can live a, a rich and full life. So they don't even make the distinction. Her baby could actually just have Down syndrome. They don't want, they don't want to have this baby now because they don't want to have, they look at this as a net negative. The baby comes out with Down syndrome, nope, it's defective, kill it. We'll, we'll, we'll try again. That's what this comes down to. You, you're trying to tell me that people like that shouldn't be held accountable? Those aren't loving people. Those are people who will use murder to get what they want. Just like any murderer on the street. It could be Down syndrome. And even if it's not, let's say it's trisomy 18 or trisomy 13. The baby still has a shot. It's uncommon for babies, but they still have a shot. They didn't talk about that at all in that article, did they? They just said trisomy. Isn't that interesting? What if it's trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome? They didn't say Down syndrome. They said trisomy. Why'd they do that? They could have said Edwards syndrome, Patel syndrome. No. When they diagnosed, I'm sure they would have told her which one it was. Which means that 
the Daily Mail would have known. Whoever wrote the article would have known. But they kept it ambiguous on purpose. They don't expect anybody to go look up and see what trisomy is. People don't know that trisomy is linked to Down syndrome. They know about Down syndrome. They don't know what trisomy is. The Daily Mail is banking on your ignorance. They want, they want to garner your sympathy. And they want to take advantage of your ignorance. You know why? Because they don't like you. They don't like you at all. They actually hate you. Because if they, if they didn't hate you, they respect you enough to give you all the facts and then let you decide. But they can't let you decide because more often times than not, if they give you all information and let you decide, you're not going to agree with them. Because they're evil. And most people, whether they believe in God or not, they have his laws written on their heart. Most people are going to go, no, murder is wrong. No, rape is wrong. Right? I'm sure you believe rape is wrong. Whether you're an atheist, agnostic, or what. I'm sure that you do. Because his laws are written on your heart. They can't have that. So, I want you to understand. They're going to use this case in any case like this. This is what they do. They use whatever they can that they feel they can, they can leverage your, your, your emotional state and leverage your ignorance, that's what they're going to use. They do it with guns, calling things assault weapons. You, you realize that if, if I hurt somebody with this pen, this pen is an assault weapon. So they just use terms. Climate change, yes, winter, spring, summer, fall. They use these terms. And they, what they rely on is your emotion and your ignorance to get you to agree with them. And what they want is more power. That's all, always what they want. So, the subjective world allows them that. The objective world doesn't. And I want to help you guys wake up to that. I want to turn on that light. I want you to understand that there is no salvation. There's no better life. There's no better world that can be had or created in the subjective. It can't be. The subjective world or, or subjectivity by definition is going to be divisive because it depends on the individual subjects. There's nothing unifying with subjectivity. Objectivity bounds everybody no matter who they are, no matter their ethnic origin, no matter their gender, no matter their sexual preference. It binds us all to one truth. That's inclusive. That's unifying. So everything that they say is actually the opposite. And I want you to wake up to that. I want you to wake up to it. This is just one example. I could, I, could, I could literally do a segment back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Showing you these things under different situations and different circumstances. But it's, it's all the same game. It's all the same game. And they've been playing it for a very, very, very long time. And it's caused nothing but tragedy. The most deaths, the most tragedy in human history is all, it's all perpetrated by people pulling things into the subjective world for their own gain, their own selfish ends. Anyway, you can read through this article and then look up trisomy yourself. Don't believe me. You check it out. You do it yourself. See, I actually respect you. I believe in you. I actually love you. I believe that, that if you learn the objective truth and let that inform your decisions, you're always going to make the right decision. That's what I believe because I have faith in you. These people don't. They just want to get their way. Because if you tell a person the truth, that'll really help them. If you tell a, pe a person what they want to hear, you're doing that to help yourself. That's the way that works. <laughs> you guys be well.